So in today's meeting, we're basically just going to talk about how this works and get to know each other and then plan for the next sessions. Um, as you can see in the syllabus, our goals for the co-op are simple but lofty. Um, we are creating a community of publishing professionals and between all of you implementing your programs locally, you're gonna have a lot of information to share with one another, a lot of suggestions, a lot of resources. Um, and all of you can contribute ideas, um, even if the idea is don't try this because it didn't work very well, or you know, we thought we'd be further along, but we're not. All of those things I think are really helpful for everyone to hear. And so even though Elvis, Mike and I are you know, hosting these sessions in a way, we get really excited when you guys chime in, when you tell us your experience. Um, many of you have publishing experience, which we'll talk about shortly. So please know that this really is um, a collective class and we encourage you to um, share your experience. The co-op is also about providing flexible infrastructure so that you can have a publishing program that works for you. We are publishing CC BY licensed textbooks in the co-op. Um, that license is important to us. If you have any questions about it, um, let me know. And then finally, we're supporting professional developments for all of you by providing this training, as well as expert consultations. So um, as we've called it an orientation, it really is just kind of a start for you to get to think about publishing and practice publishing on a particular workflow. But as you go along, as I think Kathy and Anna and others in the first cohort can attest, you will have individualized project attention and support from Scribe and from your community of, of peers here. So we're not gonna meet for you know, nine weeks and then say, see ya, good luck, let us know when everything's finished. Um, this really is just the beginning. So now I'm just gonna introduce myself. Um, for anyone who um, maybe I haven't met, I'm Karen Lauritsen, I'm a managing director with the Open Textbook Network, and I'm really here to support different publishing pathways for you at your institutions so that you can support faculty who want to publish open textbooks. I will now turn it to Elvis to introduce himself. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Elvis Ramirez. I am a project manager and ebook developer here at Scribe. Um, I'll be one of your contacts along with uh, Michael, who you can see is signed in here, um, here at Scribe for we need whatever you guys need. We're here to answer questions, um, you know, guide you in projects, provide bids if you guys are going to use our services uh, in that capacity. Um, and yeah, and so um, I also deal with Spanish work here. So if you guys have Spanish stuff out there, you know, um, I'm fluent in the language, so um, we can help with that. And uh, we also deal with NIMAS stuff. I, I'm the NIMAS person here. Uh, in the Florida office. So um, if you guys have questions about that, we are more than happy to sort of uh, answer those questions. So yeah, uh, I guess I'll pass it now to Michael so that he can introduce himself. Hi, uh, I'm Michael Miller or Mike Miller or just don't call me late for dinner Miller. Um, so uh, I'm a type sitter and project manager and production manager here at Scribe. Uh, I've been working in publishing for 20 years, uh, so I've seen a lot of stuff come and go and things that worked well and things that didn't work well. And um, I'm in the Pennsylvania office, uh, the Allentown, Pennsylvania office. Between Alex and I, we should be able to uh, help you with whatever problems you come up with. Uh, so yeah, uh, looking forward to it, looking forward to it. Uh, and uh, Karen, what's next? All right. Um, thank you, Mike. I went ahead and um, muted anyone who's not talking just because sometimes there is background noise. We had a little um, a little splash there of sound. So um, that doesn't mean I don't want you to talk. Feel free to unmute whenever you need to chime in or use the chat. Um, what I'm now going to do is ask um, the two people who are here from our first cohort to say hello, maybe your name, your role, anything about your project so far. Um, any wisdom you may wish to share with um, with our new cohort? Kathy, can I ask you to to start? Hi, Hi everyone. I'm Kathy Labadorf. I'm at the University of Connecticut, 
and um, we, uh, of all the people in all the cohorts in all the world, no, um, <laughs> last year, I think Yukon, we were farther along in getting books, but had absolutely no experience with publishing. Okay, so we're in this, right now, as a matter of fact, I have the completed manuscript to Vijay's book, Elvis. I have it, the completed manuscript. Nice. Plus, uh, I just got it last week, plus all the images, and he's done it all. And so um, uh, we started with pieces of Vijay's book, which was really quite good for us because we got our feet right into what Elvis is going to teach you, the com composition part. So we, um, I'll talk a little bit more about how to, how to make sure authors know what you need later on, but not this time. Uh, but so, so even if you're, uh, you know, whatever we have here today, don't wait for your first book. I really recommend that, that you get a document that has some images, it has some other stuff in it, and then has paragraphs and has sections, and just play with it, with all this uh, stuff, and um, see what you can do. I don't know if there's a plan to have an exercise like that, where we're all doing it, but um, you can you can learn a lot, but if, especially learning for me, anyway, I, I don't know about for you, is doing it is actually doing it, using the tools that Elvis is going to show and getting those under your fingers. Um, so we're in the midst of uh, working on peer review, trying to figure out how in the world we do peer review. So I'll, I'll be here listening every moment. It's very nice to meet you. And Sunny, hi. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, that, that's all for now. Okay, thank you, Kathy. So as she mentioned, Kathy is going to return and share some of the things um, that she's learned in future sessions. And she raised the point of doing hands on work, which we're absolutely going to do when we start getting more technical a few weeks into the session, you will be given a sample document that you can work in. But if like Kathy, you already have a few chapters or you have something from an author and you want to start experimenting in that um, manuscript, you can do that too, but we'll, we'll talk more about that, but just kind of to start to get you thinking on, on how you can get your feet wet. Um, Anna? Hi, sure, thanks. Um, so I'm Anna Kraft, and I'm at, I'm at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro, and we, uh, as Karen said, have been part of the first cohort. We currently have three book projects that we're working on, and it's really been a learning curve with, um, every project is so different. And the support that the different authors ask for, whether it's like just crickets from one author who's working on math and who says he really, he doesn't need anything, he's just gonna give us the finished LaTeX or however you say that um, document or another one who hasn't actually started writing yet, but has lots of questions about process and um, the license and all of that. There's been a lot of back and forth with authors. We've just had meetings with all of them over the past like month or so. Um, but ha having the cohort to uh, come back to with questions has been so helpful. Um, so I really appreciate that. And just seeing what people are doing and having the opportunity to, to really engage with that, um, the support is greatly appreciated. Thanks, Anna. And she raised uh, a good issue to start thinking about, too. You might be starting a program with a manuscript in hand, and the reason you joined the co-op is because all of a sudden a faculty member showed up and said, I need help with this. And you're like, oh, great. Okay, I have this thing I need help with. Um, others of you, I think, are probably um, ramping up and thinking about how do I want to structure a publishing program and do a call for proposals, and what do I want to be sure is in place before I kind of go big with an announcement. And so with those kind of considerations in mind, we can also talk about how to sort of build those expectations into whatever call for proposals you do. So for example, Anna mentioned LaTeX. Um, you may say like, you know, you're gonna be writing in Word. Like that's part of this call for proposals I'm doing because I'm gonna use this particular workflow. Um, there are ways to move between different um, publishing tools and still use Scribe. You're not limited to doing it in Word, but um, what we're going to be learning is word based. So, okay. So I think that's everyone from our first cohort. Let me just click on over here. 
to the other Brady Bunch screen. Okay, um, if we could now please um, just quickly introduce ourselves because I think many of us had a chance to meet, a lot of you came to the tea time, which was awesome, but not everyone. So if you can please just say your name, your role, where you are, and how about what you like best about um, your work and what you do, just something kind of fun or interesting. I'm going to call on people as I see them on my screen, just so we have a methodology here. Uh, Myra, can I ask you to kick us off? You're still muted though. Okay. There you are. Sure. So I'm Myra Bunza from Western Michigan University. Um, I have been the institutional repository librarian uh, for since 2011. And so that's uh, a place to put um, open educational resources, uh, which is how I got involved in, in doing that. And now I've been removed from reference and all that so that my other job is working with OERs and getting that off the ground here at Western. Um, I have a couple of, oh, we're not talking about projects, right? <laughs> you right. can mention projects quickly. Because well, like. I think I have, um, I have a Spanish textbook um, that is sort of complete, but I think there's lots of questions, especially about the images um, and, um, and then comparative religion um, says they have something, but I haven't seen it yet and I'm trying to get a, a meeting with them. Um, what do I, I like the diversity of my job. I mean, I like that there's all sorts of interesting projects and this is a new skill um, I've worked a little bit with publishing on publishing journals in the repository and realized a lot of issues around copy editing and all that kind of stuff. But I, um, I would love to learn the systematic, um, learn, learn about publishing systematically. Super. Thanks, Myra. Nathan, you're next in my Brady Bunch display here. Hi, um, I'm Nathan Lentfer. I'm the instructional designer and technologist manager at the University of Northwestern in St. Paul. And what I love best about what I do, I guess I would say I like being able to take something very complex and making it accessible to um, a wide variety of learners. Great. Emily? Great, hi everyone, I'm Emily Frank. I'm at Lewis, the Louisiana Library Network, a consortium of 47 private and public um, colleges, their academic libraries in Louisiana. Some of you may know me from um, LSU, Louisiana State University. I just recently started this job at Lewis at the end of September, so it's still new for me and lots of exciting new projects. I think one thing I like about this job, um, like Myra, you were saying, there's always learning and that's really exciting. And then also, I'm originally from Kentucky and so now being part of a statewide um, group, I'm able to interact with um, parts of the state, see new parts of the state, meet new people, and that's been a lot of fun. Cool, congratulations on your new role. Thanks. Adam? Hello, I'm Adam Minnie at the University of Northwestern. I'm an instructional designer uh, with Nathan and Amy. Um, and, uh, Succinctly, probably one of my favorite parts of being an instructional designer is um, indirectly empowering students and teachers or faculty to be capable of um, growth and success they didn't think was available to them by making um, learning, I don't know what, deceptively challenging but rewarding and um, inviting and addictive sometimes. Yeah, very fulfilling. Thank you. Marilyn? Hi, Marilyn Billings from University of Massachusetts Amherst. Um, I, like uh, Mira was saying earlier, I started an institutional repository program um, 12 years ago and was building up some, a little bit of knowledge about publishing journals and conferences and things. And then started working on our open education program in 2011 and I was feeling like everything was going in different directions with different threads and so now with the way we're starting up with this publishing cooperative I feel like all those pieces are coming back together and interweaving so beautifully 
um, and I'm wicked excited about learning something new. Um, I'll be going on sabbatical as of the end of this month, but I'm going to stay with this as much as I can while I'm out of sync with everything else having to do with my job. Great. Sunny? Okay, I'm, I'm Sunny Pai. I'm from uh, Kapiolani Community College um, <clears throat> at the University of Hawaii. Um, I'm a member, I'm, I'm a digital initiatives librarian, and um, uh, my college is uh, part of um, the University of Hawaii Community College's um, consortium as member of uh, Open Textbook Network. So um, I've been involved in open source uh, uh, systems um, since um, 2006 timeframe. And uh, what I love about my job is I get to combine a community college mission with open and with student learning orientation. Great. Thank you, Sunny. Amy? Hi, I am also an instructional designer at University of Northwestern in St. Paul. And I think the thing that I enjoy most about my job is being able to brainstorm new ideas and um, innovate in the work that we do either with my team or with people from other institutions. Great. Thank you. Let's see, moving to the next screen, Greg. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, just barely. Oh, uh, there, that's great. Is that better? Okay, yeah, yeah uh, I'm uh, Greg Rosauer. I'm uh, the uh, archivist at uh, the University of Northwestern St. Paul as well. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, um, the favorite thing I like to do about my with my job is um, really bringing uh, his, history uh, back from the dead. So uh, I do like kind of bringing back um, the historical context of our institution and uh, things surrounding that, uh, especially through digitization projects. And so part of part of uh, this uh, initiative that we have with open textbooks as well sort of hinges along the lines with some of the digital projects that I've got going to. Super. And Jeremy? Hi, everyone. I'm Jeremy Smith, from, also from UMass Amherst. And I'm the ostensibly the open education librarian, although that's not my title. Um, and I enjoy learning about new technologies and then teaching it to others so that they can do the work that they like to do. Madeline? Hi, I'm also from UMass Amherst. I'm in research services. And one thing I love is getting to leave the library and do my drop-in research hours in this amazing new building on campus made entirely of engineered wood. There's Ooh. only a few in the world and it is gorgeous. And I get to work with the faculty and students right where they live, so to speak. Cool. Is that engineered wood behind you? No, that's just concrete. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the library right now. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe we'll see you in the future. Um, and I think the last person is Ari McGuire. Okay, in the chat. Hi, everyone. I'm Ruth McGuire and the library director at University of Northwestern St. Paul. She did not get a mic or camera going for today. One of the favorite parts of her position is partnering with other departments across campus. And that's why we're doing this project. Librarians are working alongside the instructional designers. That is awesome. Okay, I don't think I missed anyone, but if I did, please holler. Um, as you all heard, you all have such diverse expertise and interests and things that get you excited. And so that's really what makes our group strong too, is the questions you're gonna be asking. Um, the solutions you're potentially going to be coming up with and um, just bringing all of your different education and professional experience to the group. So that's really exciting. We, um, we appreciate that and welcome it. So um, as I was listening to Marilyn's introduction, I was just reminded um, we are hosting a pre-conference about open textbook publishing uh, to be held in Vancouver. If you have a travel budget, um, it may be an opportunity to see us in person, get together, 
Um, we're going to be doing facilitated tables on um, open textbook development. This is in May. Um, and so you're all obviously invited to attend. We were able to keep the cost down pretty low. I'm not looking at it right now, but I wanna say maybe it's $40 for the pre-conference um, and another day in beautiful Vancouver. So um, if you have questions about that or need more information, please let me know. It would be great to see any and all of you there. And as you heard from particularly University of Northwestern St. Paul and UMass Amherst, um, you are welcome to invite any colleagues who may be interested um, in the publishing process, the more the merrier. Um, however, there are, there are more than one, there's more than one person working alone. So if it's just you, um, you know, know that uh, you can turn to all of us as your support and that you don't have to um, feel too lonely at your institution, I hope. So I'm just gonna give you a little more background about the co-op and about the second cohort, um, the origin story. So when I came on board about two and a half years ago with the Open Textbook Network, one of the key reasons that the position was created was because when my colleagues, uh, Dave Ernst and Sarah Cohen were visiting institutions, um, doing workshops about adopting open textbooks, sometimes faculty would say, you know, I'm really open to adopting an open textbook, but I don't see anything in the open textbook library that's right for me. I want to write my own thing. Can you help me? Um, so this uh, position was created and uh, we've been working hard on providing a lot of different support and pathways. There's an editing guide, an authoring guide, um, a sample contract for OER creation that we worked with the attorneys at Creative Commons on. Um, and then I, I was doing some more in-depth interviews once I came on board and talking to a lot of people across the network about their experience publishing. Because as you all know, publishing can mean a lot of things. I mean, you can throw something up online and call it published that you wrote 10 minutes ago, and that's legit publishing but it may be not what you have in mind for um, your faculty projects. So in talking to people, a lot of times there were some kind of sad stories um, that involved lots of late nights and frustration, particularly around expectations of, you know, when the faculty said, help me publish and what the, maybe the person at the library was positioned to support in helping that person publish were not always the same thing, particularly when it came to, um, editorial services. So proofreading, copy editing, um, formatting, finding ways to get images to embed correctly in different file types. Those things take a lot of time. Um, they can be different across publishing platforms. And if you don't have the expertise in proofreading or copy editing, that's kind of a lot to take on. So we went looking for kind of a robust, full-bodied support. I do live in the wine country. Um, for people in this position. So we talked to a few university presses and said, you know, here's our members, here's what they're saying, you know, can we help them? And a few different university presses said, sure, we'd be interested in working with you. Um, and then one finally said, we could work with you, but we'd essentially be the middle person. You might want to talk to Scribe because we work with Scribe. They're the ones who do our back office publishing services. So it's, Often when I think of university presses, I think, oh, you know, the whole kit and caboodle is right there, but there's usually kind of this whole other support system in place. So um, I contacted Scribe and talked with David Reck there, who you'll probably have the chance to meet. He's the founder and CEO of Scribe. And he was really interested and open to exploring um, how to support publishing OER and said, absolutely, we'll share all of our documentation openly. We'll join you in these trainings. You know, let's see how this works because publishing, as you all know, um, is a, an industry going through a lot of change. No one has particularly found the winning combination of how to offer um, publishing services. There's so much change with what even is the definition of a book. But anyway, um, it, last year uh, we launched our first cohort with our founding members. And we learned a lot of stuff. Um, right away, we learned that we were going pretty fast, um, that we were working with some people who had publishing experience and many people who had none. And so we've made a lot of changes to the syllabus. 
Um, and we have also shortened our meeting time because we were really uh, meeting, I think, was it for three hours? Four hours, man, we are meeting four hours at a stretch, you guys. So um, as you can imagine, that was pretty demanding. So now we're looking at two hours a week, but we are asking you guys to do some homework and do some self-directed engagement with the material. The Canvas course that you'll be working off of is new. Um, at the end of every unit is a short little survey that says, you know, did this work for you? Your feedback is really, really essential for all of us and for the success of the program. So that includes when we're here in these Zoom meetings, if we're going too fast, please tell us. If we think we've communicated something clearly and we haven't, let us know. We really count on your engagement and feedback um, to, to know how things are going. So I'm really excited about um, this new iteration. We'll continue, of course, to iterate, but I think we um, have a really strong program here and the strength, of course, is, um, is from all of you. So um, let's take a look again at the syllabus in terms of how things are structured. I'm still on page one with the orientation objectives. Um, we're well underway here with number one. Our goal is for all of you to get to know each other. You are the same people who are in the Google group. So please, you know, post questions to the Google group and your colleagues. Um, everyone is a real human being behind that listserv um, and is happy to help you. We're going to start uh, the course or the orientation with an introduction to what makes the textbook unique and how it's different than a monograph. We don't want to come out of the co-op with a bunch of um, monographs, essentially. We want to be sure that we're working together to create a structured pedagogically sound textbook that has a lot of different um, consistent features. Um, we're going to cover the publishing process more holistically. We're going to talk about common roles in publishing, responsibilities in pre-production and production. And a lot of that is so that you can figure out what you're in a position to do and also, of course, just orient you to publishing. But we, we really um, value flexibility and so we're going to give you a lot of guidelines and recommendations, but ultimately you're the professionals who know your context best and you're going to make decisions that work best for you. So a lot of times if you're hearing something from us and you're kind of thinking that's not going to work for me or how's, you know, how's this going to work exactly, there's usually a lot of flexibility to find a way to tweak it so that it does. And that will be part, of course, of number four of the objectives. Um, considering what your publishing program is positioned to offer now and in the future, whether you want to work with Scribe on some of those editorial services or whether you have another system or in-house expertise, that's all totally fine and up to you. Um, we're also going to teach you project management tools and methods for communicating with authors, something Kathy alluded to in her introduction. Um, she's learned a lot working with authors and so we'll be able to talk about that and managing expectations and ensuring timely production cycles. And then number six is when we start to get a little more technical. That's when we'll introduce what's called the well-formed document workflow, um, which you will begin to hear by the acronym WFDW, a method of creating structured hierarchical publications that are accessible. This basically scribes workflow that we'll be teaching. Um, and the way that workflow is implemented is called is through something called the SAI or the scribe add-in. It's basically a toolbar that you're all going to install in Word. Theoretically, you could ask your authors to use it. Most realistically, you'll probably be the ones uh, using it to implement structure. We'll talk a little bit more about that today. Um, you're also going to learn how to convert documents from one format into another in a place called the Digital Hub, where you will all have uh, login access shortly. And then, as we keep repeating ourselves, I know, but, um, and finally, we hope that you understand the orientations just the beginning and that we will continue to support you throughout the process. Any questions about that first page in terms of our goals or our objectives in the co-op? Okie dokie. We will meet 10 times, not counting our tea times and some bonus webinars. Um, as you all know, because you're here, uh, we'll be meeting Wednesdays. 
Um, this will be our consistent Zoom meeting when it's us, but um, I've also built in some of the webinars that, um, that I'm offering all of the OTN into the curriculum. So in terms of how that will work, for example, next Wednesday, um, next Wednesday, you will not come to this link. You'll go to a different link that I will send to you shortly to listen to John Warren talk for an hour, and then we'll come to this link together for the second hour. Oh. Does that make sense? I know it's a little clunky, but <laughs> okay. Great. Um, so in terms of meeting zero, which is where we are with our orientation, we've done our introductions. I think we've talked about community support, consultations, how the co-op is going to work. What I'd like to do now is look together at the intake form that our new members filled out. Um, I'm going to skip over the part that identifies who you are, but I just think it's helpful together to kind of see where you're all at. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay, are you guys looking at a sort of orange Google form? Yeah, okay. So here is how all of you identified your, your learning styles. Can you see this okay? Maybe I should try to make it a little bigger. There you go. You will notice a theme, which is learn by doing. And uh, we're definitely going to have you doing. There will be courses, uh, course meetings where you all get together in smaller groups and really do some hands-on stuff. Um, split down the middle in terms of publishing experience in this new group. And I know I just want to acknowledge we have a larger group obviously in this meeting. This is the project manager. So um, typically one person at each institution. So that's why it's a little bit of a smaller group number here. Um, in terms of publishing experience, there's been some journal publishing experience, um, institutional repository, literary magazine, co-editing full-length books, and um, being an author. The majority of you have experience using styles to define elements in your documents. This will be um, really helpful to you as we start working in Word and the well-formed document workflow. It's that same philosophy, that same spirit of, I can't do all of this by hand, I need to tell word, you know, how to treat each header for me going forward. Most of you are working on a PC. I am not, and someone else out there is not. Um, so if there's ever kind of a Mac specific question or glitch or you need um, help with that, uh, please let us know. But most of, most of it will be sort of geared towards those PC users. You all have Word, which is awesome, great. Half and half are either very comfortable or comfortable with technology. No one here feels uncomfortable. Um, and in terms of organizational culture, uh, widespread support for open ed. Um, some programs are emerging, some are more established, some are celebrated. So again, a diverse group of people. Um, some people have published. You're welcome to share examples of that. I think as we go, there'll be opportunities to do that. You can also put them in chat right now if you'd like people to check out the work that you've published or supported in the past. And then most of you have probably or definitely identified what you're going to be working on in the co-op. And then um, have described that work. So that actually I think is a next a good um, next step. So when Myra introduced herself, she included the um, projects that she was going to be working on. Um, let's go ahead and just take another minute or two to kind of check in with the rest of you and hear if you have projects or what stage you're at. Um, Emily, I think it would be interesting to kind of hear um, where where Lewis is at. Yeah, so um, we had received a document that was um, from a professor, but 
you know, I wrote something down about not wanting to publish monographs with this program, but wanting to publish textbooks. And I have a feeling that that document would probably would more squarely fall under a monograph. So that might be um, tabled. But we also plan to have a grant program for the whole state that will um, provide an opportunity and funding for faculty to create an OER or open textbook. Um, so for those, I don't have any specific projects in mind, but I do think there'll be um, excitement and we have funding to support that. Great, thank you. And hey, then, Karen, yeah. can I say one thing? Um, even if you have, just because it, it came up, even if you have a document that might seem like it's just a monograph, like it's just text and heads, um, it might be worth it to look at it and then say what can be added to it and what you can go back to the author and say, hey, you know, you can add these sidebars, you can add these figures, you can add this, is this something you can do? Um, and then that way, if it's a project you're like, you know, the organization's very excited about, you don't necessarily have to table it um, just because it looks like a, mon a monograph. So uh, mm -hmm. just want to throw that out there and, you know, we can help with um, sort of assessing that um, if, if it comes to that. Great. Yeah, thanks, Elvis. That's a great point. Um, there's, there's kind of a process that you'll learn about in your homework uh, before next meeting about, you know, potentially working with authors to kind of structure that conversation around like, well, could we open each chapter with this element, say a summary or an introduction and say every chapter starts with an introduction? Could we end every chapter with reflective questions? You know, would you want exercises in here? Um, I think this is a good opportunity actually to pause on our project descriptions and I'm just going to go ahead and give you a sneak preview into the very first co-op published textbook, which will be coming from Portland State University Libraries. Um, Karen Bjork is going to talk more about the experience of getting this book in, uh, in born um, in our next tea time, but I'm just going to go ahead and show you a draft of it so you can kind of see what we're talking about when we're saying not a monograph and definitely a textbook. Um, this is a philosophy book um, and um, written by Jeffrey L. Johnson. Can you all see that? Can you nod for me? Yeah, okay. Um, called Inferring and Explaining. So here we have the front matter with the uh, license information. You'll notice here is the sentence that we ask everyone to include. Just says Portland State University is a member of the Open Textbook Network Publishing Cooperative. But otherwise, this is totally your imprint. You know, you are the publisher, not the OTN. And then we start moving into the table of contents. which is many pages. We have a preface. So the layout and design, everything here is done um, by a scribe. And then you can see, okay, this chapter one starts with obviously the chapter name. Um, there's a quote here. And then um, sections are denoted, you know, with this stylistic element. There's some number callouts. Elvis, Michael, chime in here if you want to um, say more about what were sort of technical terms in terms of what we're looking at from the scribe side of things. Um, here are some callouts that, you know, throughout the rest of the book now the student will know to expect important call out information is in sort of a green rounded box. Again, these are stylistic elements that also support the learning. So each chapter is consistent. Yeah, so we actually just saw, okay. yeah. Go ahead, we just saw two different types of sidebars there that we just scrolled past. Mm -hmm. So generally refer to those as sidebars. Um, they tend to uh, convey um, uh, material that is connected conceptually with what's going on in the text, but not necessarily that has to appear within the regular flow of text. It, it throws sort of a spotlight on it. 
Right. Like, for example, that one is, and those throughout the rest of this book um, are actually links um, to things that the author refers to. Uh, like, for example, this one's just lyrics to a song that he's talking about and he's using as a, um, as a teaching tool. So um, that's included um, there. And that's why it's highlighted different from the other sidebars, which are uh, more about, I believe those are um, argument uh, forms. So it's essentially like you have all these premises and you get to this conclusion. And then that sidebar on the right, you'll, you'll see that he's just taking what he introduced in the first sidebar and sort of building on it. Um, and as Michael said, it's conceptually related, but uh, it's not part of the running uh, text. Thank you both. I don't remember if there's more. There was a table up above and <laughs> bottom left there. Yeah, yeah, and that's a table. And we've just used that um, that color scheme in order to, to highlight these uh, sort of like ancillary, but at the same time necessary materials um, for this textbook. Uh, so you'll see that there's that green motif, but whenever we're designing a book, we can then choose you know, the colors, the fonts, and all these other things. And we'll talk more about that as the classes um, go on. But the important thing is that this stuff is highlighted uh, to sort of bring, um, you know, that bring the point home about what the author is talking about. And here we have the exercises and, and quizzes, which is similar to uh, what, um, what Karen was saying. We could add to the end of a um, monograph-like book and say, hey, you know, we can, um, every chapter, for example, in this textbook ends with um, a numbered list of exercises and, um, you know, a quiz where it's actually asking the students to interact with uh, what they just finished reading. Um, so in that, that one of those, those are elements that are sort of, um, necessary for us to qual classify a book as a textbook, like something that's going to help the the students along um, and help them interact with the with the actual um, learning material. So your role will likely be working with authors to figure out what sort of elements like these may be included in each chapter, and then when you receive the manuscript denoting each chapter consistently using that scribe add-in toolbar I mentioned. It'll just be a way for you to basically tag the text, if you will, um, in the beginning so that you know the designers and everyone going forward knows how to treat those elements um, of the book. Mike or Elvis, is there anything else uh, you'd like to point out here before I stop my screen share? Or is there, are there any questions out there in terms of what you're looking at or how this was designed. I really like the clean layout. It's very beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> that was one of our designers here. That actually, that's part of the um, the conversations that we have. Not only, for example, if you guys were to use us, we would actually have like back and forth and give you several samples for you guys to look at uh, and decide which one it is. But if you guys end up doing a lot of design work yourself. You could always, you know, consult with us and say, "Hey, look, we we like this design, but we don't know if it's working or anything like that." Mm -hmm. um, so um, that's actually um, the cleanliness of this is actually sort of like a joint effort, um, and that's why it, it, I think it looks as good as it does. Um, I was going to say one thing that also on sort of related to the de to the design, we chose this two column uh, view just because it represented um, the information better. Um, but you know, there are different options when, um, you're designing, um, the book that for, for you to be able to sort of present the information in the best way possible to the students. And that's sort of, um, you know, our, our way of thinking as we design these things. So, um, yeah, I don't know if Michael wants to add anything else, uh, about this one. Uh, I may be adding more just because I've worked on this one. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and I hope um, everyone heard sort of in what Elvis was saying, the flexibility and the options, like Scribe can sort of take something and come up with design options and pass it on to you. You can decide to work with your author on selecting the design, or you can do it in-house if you have that, um, if you have that expertise or skills. So there's a lot of flexibility there. Okay. 
Um, super. So to get back to um, your projects that you think you may be working on, Sunny, can you tell us a little bit about the author you're working with and, and the project you see in the pipeline? Okay. I'm working with uh, Cheryl Shook, who's uh, uh, working, who basically is an instructor in our uh, physiology department. Um, and um, she's uh, t currently teaching a course on uh, science of sleep. And she's also consulting um, in other states uh, on this subject matter. So she wants to put uh, her materials into a textbook that she can share out. She loves the idea of CC BY, so that's fantastic. Um, she has a lot of material. She's already teaching the course, as you saw in, in the little write-ups, uh, textbook cost-free. Um, and she's really hoping that I would uh, kind of provide her with some project management help and um, help her uh, get the book out. So that's what I'm hoping to do. Great, science of sleep. And then Nathan, do you guys, you guys have a project, don't you? We are more in the maybe stage. Um, we believe we have identified an author um, and some works, but we are still finalizing the details. So um, I'm not, since this is going out on YouTube, I don't want to say much more. Sure. What about you guys, Jeremy? <clears throat> yeah, we have a couple. Uh, one actually is a uh, beekeeping manual. We just met with someone recently to go over that. And the other one is a, it's a, like a project management book for both uh, mechanical engineering and uh, school of management. Super. And Anna or Kathy, do you guys want to mention anything? Kathy, I think you mentioned the book you're working on, but I don't know if you mentioned the subject and kind of there's a lot of formulas in your book that you had to wrestle with. Ah. Yes, um, yes, I have quite a complex book and um, it's, the manuscript is 497 pages long. <laughs> uh, uh, but this is for, this is an advanced level physical chemistry book. So this is for a 3000 level course. And it is, um, the title of the book is Modern Molecular Thermodynamics. Okay, you're talking to a musician here who likes to garden. Okay, this is, I have. So, yes, yeah, so he, uh, so our, our, the author is a fantastic, uh, amazing researcher and writer. He's written a lot. Um, and he, was he started his book in in word and he it was like magical uh the way word and if he, he he put it in the structure that word allows and to go into the scribe tool it just goes oh so nice and easily uh but the if you have a science book or a math book those um those formulas can be quite a uh, challenge mm -hmm. uh because of all the different characters. So um, at points you may need to like add a font or two to uh, InDesign to, you know, to capture all these characters. But if your author is really good to you, and this is part of communicating with the author, they will actually create all the formulas using the word formula, what is it called Elvis? The equation editor. The equation editor. They they can make that. So that makes the equation actually into an image, which can be totally downloaded and totally re-put back in when you're going from Word into InDesign. So uh, that's, um, I, I only know that now because of, of Elvis and, and Tim last year. And he uh, was good and did that for, even though there are hundreds of formulas with, and they're pretty complex. So, so um, it's always, you know, if I think if you see something that's a little complex in your book, you might want to run it by Elvis and, or, and Mike, because um, there may be a, a, um, a way to simplify the, the complexity of it before you try, you know, start pulling your hair out. And uh, the images themselves, um, with the kinds of images, I'm just working on them right now, actually. They are mostly graphs, graphics, and they have A, B, C, they're different ones. And 
um, I finally did learn that they should be in uh, as vector, saved as vector images. And I don't know, Elvis, do, do you save other all images as vector images, um, or is it just these mathematical looking ones? So the, the best way and what we would normally recommend, and this is going way into the classes, but I will mention yeah. it now, is um, you know, we want the highest uh, resolution images. Um, and it's always best if you give us like, you know, the EPS, the TIFF, the okay. PNG uh, images, the vector images, uh, if yeah. you will. Uh, but if all you have, for example, you have like an image of, I don't know, San Francisco, right? And you need to include that in your book, um, you know, and all you have is a JPEG, as long as it's high re resolution JPEG, we can work with that. So, uh, but for these like uh, very like specific images, it's always best to get the, uh, the vector. Yeah. yeah, so I've been learning Adobe Illustrator and how to change these from, they created them in PowerPoint if you can believe this. And it, uh, it's a long story. You don't want to hear it. So, uh, but it was, uh, they're beautiful now and they can resize to any proportion. It's amazing. So, um, and it's, it is something you can do in house if you have these kinds of tools. Uh, it just takes time, but that's what publishing does. I think <laughs> it does take time. And I will say, you know, Kathy has been so all in on learning every single part of the publishing process. And some of you may decide, I don't want to know about these parts. I want to turn this over to somebody else. Um, but if you do want to learn it all, um, we are here to support you in that too. Um, and I will note something else from what Kathy just talked about. Um, as you all saw in our brief survey, all of you are familiar with structuring documents in Word using, you know, this is my header one. Um, if you ask an author to do that, so not even using the scribe add-in tool, but just asking them, you know, write in Word and structure it, the document in this way, it potentially saves you a ton of work um, when you go back in there. So if you're, you know, in early stages, or if you're doing a call for proposals, you could say, you know, we're looking for manuscripts in Word, you know, that mark header one, header two, very simple stuff that we're all used to doing. That, that small um, requirement or parameter will really be useful to you in terms of saving time and, and structuring things later. So Anna, I think you were gonna mention your projects also. Sure, yeah, really quickly. Um... We have one that's in social work and the author has really, she's, she hasn't started writing yet. Um, things are moving kind of slowly. She's got a good plan, but she hasn't, the writing isn't done. Um, we have one in mathematics and he's, it's gonna be uh, LaTeX and he's, he's chugging along. Uh, and then the third one is I think the most complex one and that's international business, and it involves a lot of co-authors, not just here, but all over. It's an international business course that's being taught by professors all around the world. So the primary person is here on campus. His co-authors are all over the place, and that one has taken the most, um, he's had the most questions, and trying to sort of wrangle expectations with that one has been the most challenging. But I think um, after, further discussions about the licensing and all of that and trying to help get that information out to all the co-authors. I think we're on the same page. We, um, yeah, it's, that one's been the most, uh, the most challenging so far, but I think there's a, a wide, um, definitely a wide audience for it for, because that class is so large. Yeah. And hearing about all of these projects, I hope it's just um, a reminder or to highlight sort of the, the, broad variety, not just in subject area, but in terms of how authors are working with you, how authors may be working with other contributors, um, what sort of elements may be in a textbook. You know, a thermodynamics textbook is gonna look very different than a philosophy textbook. Um, so we're here to, you know, sort of explore that co complexly together, think about um, what sort of elements may be best depending on the um, discipline. So does anyone have any questions for us or for one another about these projects? Is there anything you're anticipating like, oh, I really don't want to work with tables ever again in my life. And I know there's a lot of tables in this project. Anything kind of upfront that you might want to share to let some air into the anxiety? 
I, I had a question about math because uh, I have right now I have two math projects that I'm working with. Um, but um, uh, our, our instructors, our professors like to work with LaTeX. It's so easy for them. It's much easier for them than MathML. Um, so having said that, um, when you embed the equations in, in a math textbook as an image, what does that do for accessibility? Because uh, accessibility is, is a big topic in our system right now. So I would answer that what we would have to do in that case, we would have to make sure that the equations are described in a natural language so that we can include that as alt text in, okay. um, in the final product. Because um, just because of the nature of the images, as I said, we work with, um, with NIMAC and um, getting um, books into their system. And so one of their requirements, for example, is that that equations or anything that's used as images need to have like naturally descriptive text um, yeah. as alt text so that if a screen reader is reading it, it will just pick up and will describe the equation in a way that's understandable and natural um, to somebody just listening it. Okay, great. Thank you. No problem. Thanks for the question. I'm just hoping that this will help me. Uh, I have to work with an economics journal, and that has so many tables and very complicated, you know, so any help with that, even though that's not going to be part of this project. <laughs> it'll be a bonus, yes. <laughs> it'll just help. <laughs> Hopefully you'll be learning a lot that you can apply in many different yeah, yeah. Uh, publishing contexts, for sure. Other questions or issues you foresee you'd like to get on the table? Okay, the next thing we're gonna do um, as- Can I just, oh. sorry, can I just ask one thing? So you were mentioning a few different things that I think we have here in house, but I just want to be sure, like you were talking about Adobe Illustrator and InDesign and things like that, so that if we want to be doing that kind of work, which I assume we will, that we already, that we, I want to just make sure that we have all that available for, for us. So do you have a listing of that, all those kinds of tools, or did I miss it somewhere? We do have a listing. We have a listing of required and optional tools yeah, in our Canvas thing. course. Um, of course, having the tool and knowing how to use it can sometimes be two different things. <laughs> but since you have a press there and, and other people who are experienced, um, I will, maybe, Elvis, could you find that, that list um, and I'll get people going on um, the scribe add-in stuff. So while, while Elvis gets that link for you, Marilyn, um, I'm just gonna put a link in the chat. I've auto-populated some information here, but um, for those of you who brought your teams of people who maybe didn't fill out the form, if you can add your information in here, um, this is just a spreadsheet we're going to be working off of um, internally to generate access to the Scribe Hub and so that you can download the Scribe add-in. So if you don't see your name here, but you are here right now, <laughs> please add your information and then Scribe is going to, again, generate a Scribe Hub login for you. Oh, okay, so you want us to answer that email then, right? Uh, well, I, I went in there and it gave me, but it said that uh, some administrator was going to give me a password. Right, that was my understanding also. So, Karen, mm -hmm. are you giving us oh. passwords? <laughs> yes, you guys, are, you guys are, I love how eager you are. You're totally on it. <laughs> Um, so I think I can I can answer a little bit about what's going on with that. So um, before the class, I um, I managed to find the time to put in um, everybody that I had an email for, um, and you should have received an email from us. And I think that's the email that you're referring to, and it's asking you to uh, put in the password. I will. Um, I don't know if I should just put in the password out there, but uh, since this is going up on YouTube. Um, you can email I'll, the Google group. Email. Yeah, that's uh, I'll email the Google group. That's what I, that's what I'll do. Um, but yeah, um, there is a password um, that I've already set up. It's it's a simple one. But um, once you have that, you should sign in and you should change your password to something more 
uh, secure, but I'll email the Google group um, after the class uh, with um, all that uh, information. I'm still looking now for that list of things. Okay. I'll give it back to Karen while I still search for this. Okay, so we're wrapping up here. Elvis is looking for one thing and I'm gonna show you this one. Elvis, why don't we trade actually, and I'll find um, the list. And if you want to tell people more about the Scribe add-in, um, I put a link to Canvas there. Oh, and I just found the link. <laughs> Great. Okay. <laughs> so there's two links for you now in the chat. Mm -hmm. The one that I posted that um, is the Canvas Scribe add-in SAI. Uh, Elvis will talk more about that in a minute. The one Elvis posted was in response to Marilyn's question in terms of what tools mm -hmm. um, you may want access to. Again, especially if you're a one person program or if you don't have um, others in your organization who are familiar with publishing, this may be a little overwhelming. So um, take it with a grain of salt or contact us if you have any questions when you, when you look at that list. Marilyn, does that look like what you're going for? Okay, I see you nodding. Elvis, can I hand it over to you for the SAI? Sure, sure. And so um, just one quick thing about that list. That list does not include Illustrator and things like that, just because those are things that we, um, you know, it's almost on an as needed basis. But the ones that are up on that list are the ones that we suggest um, you should have. And we also include some open source alternatives to some of the things like Photoshop and, and whatnot, just in case it's easier uh, for your organization to um, get those programs. So, um, so now switching gears, um, what we're gonna talk about now is the Scribe add-in. Now the Scribe add-in is a tool uh, that Scribe has developed that um, you include, you add to your word installation, hence the name add-in, um, and it shows up as a, um, as a ribbon across the top. Actually, I don't know if I have the ability to share screens. You should. I should, I should, okay. Let me just pop open a Word document and I'll share that with everybody. And the installation process is up on, um, up on the site, just as uh, Karen has already linked to it. It's a pretty simple process. We've also included sort of a quick little demo video um, that like goes through the process. So you have a visual um, and um, you'll have some narration to guide you through it just in case you need. Um, and I will just chime in. Mm -hmm. This is uh, letting you kind of get ahead of the game in terms mm -hmm. of previewing. This is nothing that you need for the next meeting or the meeting after that, for that matter. This is just if you're like really curious, you hear us talking about the Scribe add-in, you want to try installing it on your own and just looking at it. Um, that's why we're talking about it now. If you don't want to do that and want to wait until we are all together, we can also um, walk you through the installation. So this is kind of a for the advanced go-getter student who wants to work ahead. We're just going to show you this, um, this piece. Right. Um, and just like Karen said, and just to reiterate, um, we don't want anybody to get scared and look at this and say, I have no idea how I'm going to install this thing or look at this. This is just so that you can see one of the essential tools um, that you'll be using if in the end you do decide uh, to be the person at your organization that deals with composition um, and deals with the, um, you know, not only the receipt of um, of documents from your authors, but also um, working with them to get them ready for production. Um, because um, as Karen has mentioned before, and we've alluded to, um, everything that we're gonna teach you in these classes, it does not mean that you have to do everything. Um, now, if you happen to be a one man or one woman group, you know, then um, at that point, you may wanna just talk to us and we can like, dig in a little deeper into some of these things. But um, again, this is just sort of almost like a survey or a preview uh, of what we have. So um, can everybody see my screen? I just want to see people nodding. Yes, okay. So you'll see the SAI, I already have it installed because I often use it uh, for, uh, for my work here at Scribe, but it appears like this in this version of Word, and I believe in 2016 it appears uh, the same way. It's just a little ribbon uh, right next to your home uh, ribbon here. 
Um, and you'll see that there are various different um, tools available. We're not going to go through them um, right now just because um, I don't want to get too into the details. We'll cover those once we actually start composing and, and working with that. And by the way, when I use the word composing, all I'm saying is applying structure to um, the document. Um, oftentimes composing, I believe in publishing, often means uh, typesetting, uh, but in our nomenclature we use um, composing for applying structure to word and typesetting for typesetting. Um, and so with this tool what you're able to do is you're able to apply that structure to the uh, word, uh, word documents that you're going to receive from um, your authors and that will then um, allow us to then uh, move on in production. And I know I'm going over it a little bit sort of basically, but that's the purpose. I don't want anybody to go too in depth. Um, so if, um, as Karen mentioned, if um, you feel um, confident enough and you want to go ahead and try to install this, please feel free. It won't damage Word or anything like that if you don't happen to get it right. So please feel free to experiment. Um, and you can ask questions in the Google group um, as um, as you try to install that. Um, does anybody have any uh, questions about what we've just discussed or anything? Um, maybe maybe you're a little scared right now and I've completely um, turned you off of this thing. No, I, hopefully that's not the case. Um, so yeah, so anybody with questions, you feel free to ask. So just to give a review of what Elvis um, just covered, once we have created the scribe um, login information for you so that you can access the hub. As Myra was saying, where's my password? Once, once you have a password, you'll be able to log in. You'll be able to download the scribe add-in if you so choose at this time. And then you'll be able to see it in Word and play around with it if you like. In the Canvas link that we put in the chat, there's a short tutorial of Elvis with his radio voice walking you through how to uh, install that tool. So you can give it a go on your own. Let us know how it works. If it doesn't work, we will um, walk you through it at a future date. But again, we just wanted to kind of let you add it if you are um, chomping at the bit and want to start seeing what this thing is all about. Any questions about Scribe add-in or anything else so far? So my understanding is that the uh, the content generator, the author, uh, doesn't necessarily have to work with this add-in. It's basically the project manager person. Okay. Right. Right. And if you so choose, you could have like if you have an author that's willing to like play around with it and and do something with it. Um, we certainly welcome that. Um, but um, normally the authors just send. Um, you know, their documents to the project manager and the project manager is the one that gets things, um, okay. you know, into shape. Um, but uh, as I said, there is the flexibility that if you have an author that's willing to experiment that way, you can send them the SAI and say, hey, look, install this and play around with it and see if that's something um, for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, are, is the chat um, with all the links, is that going to be sent to us as a, as a email? You know, I think I can find a way to do that. But um, Myra, that's actually a good lead in for what I was going to show next. Oh. And that's just the Canvas course. It's basically the hub of everything that we're learning and referring to as we meet weekly in these sessions. So if you haven't yet looked at it, um, I just dropped it in to the chat. Um, you'll see the first module is a welcome module. You can make your way through that as you wish. The second module is called the OTN Publishing Cooperative. This is information specific to the co-op that you can also um, look over as you wish. The link that Marilyn requested in terms of what do we need to install, what kind of software do we need to have, that is in this particular module there at the top. And then finally under that you'll see unit one. What is an open textbook? So this unit is your homework. Um, this is what we would like you to look at before coming back next Wednesday. It um, looks long in this uh, module, but each, each page isn't too lengthy, I don't think. There's also two videos that you'll find in this unit. If you could please be sure to watch those two videos. 
um, they're really helpful in terms of more information about like, well, what is a textbook? How do you make it? How do you talk to authors about it? Um, so Myra, I think okay, it'll what, be what you're looking for will be here in terms of all those links. Thank you. Sure. So when you come back, uh, when we meet again next week, again, we'll be meeting in this space in the second hour. We're all going to see each other first in the webinar. Have, has, it, has everyone signed up for the webinar? Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh. In terms of some of the teams? Oh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> Great. Um, please sign up for the webinars this week. Um, the reason I did sign up is just because we weren't sure how many people to expect and there's a limit in Zoom. Um, but I'll be sending out uh, registration information just to the people who registered in terms of like, find us at the Zoom link. Mm. So anyway, that's where we'll start the first hour. And then in the second hour, if you can please bring two takeaways for you from unit one and one question for us, that'll ensure that we can kind of review, um, cover anything that has been left unanswered from that unit. Um, and of course, in the meantime, that's what the Google group is there for too. So if you read something um, and you want to explore it more in the group, please feel welcome to post it there um, in between class sessions. So I think that's all we have for you. Any parting thoughts, words, questions, fears? I was wondering, I don't remember if I signed up for the webinar. Can you confirm that for me? Sure. Yeah, you know, later. Thank you. Sure. Anyone else? Okay. Madeline, if you want to stay on, I'll just confirm with you right now. And then everyone else, um, look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. Let me know or be in touch if you have any questions between now and then. We're really excited. We've just finished our first meeting. It's really nice to get off the ground with all of you and learn about your projects and what you're excited about and all of the expertise that you're bringing to the group. So we're really glad that you're here and uh, look forward to continuing. So farewell. Thank you. That was great.